Hello and welcome you guys to my new video about the gamma function. In this video we will derive the famous Stirling's approximation which you can see here beneath. It's n factorial which is approximately equal to n to the n over e to the n. None of the square root we have 2n pi. Now you might think what the heck? A square root of pi? How is this related? But if you remember the previous video in which we derived the formula for gamma of one half, you saw something like this, uh, the square root of pi. So you can imagine somehow it has something to do with the gamma function and the value of the gamma function for one half. Okay, so let's look how we can derive that. The starting point is this thing that we also mentioned in the first video about the functional equation of the gamma function that the factorial of n can be expressed as the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the n multiplied with e to the minus t dt. Okay, this is the most important thing that we can notice here. Um, and what are we going to do? The first step that I want to do is I don't want to look at the integral right now. I just want to go and examine the logarithm of e to the um, of this, the logarithm of t to the n e to the minus t. Okay. Now this is equal to using just the logarithm laws and multiplied with log of t minus t because uh, we get here what this is actually a product. You can write a product as a sum, a log of t to the n plus a log of e to the minus t and now then you use the logarithm laws. I, I think you know how it's done. If you don't do know if you don't know how this works, just look up uh, the logarithm laws and you will see that this is equal to each other. Okay? So the powers can be drawn out of the mm, logarithm and so forth. Now we have this stuff and we will do a little bit of substitution. Okay? First of all we see this and we will replace the t part with a new variable and we write it as n plus epsilon. Okay, and now we can do that. This is no problem. You can just rewrite this. There is no problem. And we, we are actually doing that. Okay, so this is what we thought. Now, in the next step, you, you see we are concentrating and concentrating on special parts of this. Now I want to concentrate on this part. Okay. First of all, I take out the n of this part, so I have n multiplied 1 plus epsilon over n, so just um, factoring n out of here. Now, using the logarithm laws, we have a product, we can write it as a sum, logarithm of n plus the logarithm of 1 plus epsilon over n. Now, this looks nice, and what I'm going to do right now is I want to introduce something when we say that n is very large, we say that n is brutally large, so that epsilon is a very, very small number to that, then we can guarantee that epsilon over n is smaller than 1, okay? This is what we want to do. We want to say, we want to not say, we want to see this to be very, very small compared to 1. Because if we can do that, we can use a special power sum of the logarithm. I proved that in a special video of mine. It's about the power, or about the Taylor series of the logarithm function. You can look into my channel and find that video where I proved this actually. And normally we had here an x to the k, but we have to plug in epsilon to the k over n to the k. Okay, and this is an alternating sum, so signs are changing all the time. We have this. And uh, very important starting from 1. Okay, Now we have this. We will just plug this into here. And then ultimately we will plug it back into here. Okay, And let's see what happens. We have n times log of n plus epsilon minus n minus epsilon. So now we plug in that stuff, uh, the stuff we know. n is equal to logarithm of n. And then we had logarithm of 1 plus epsilon over n. And we said that if n is very, very large compared to epsilon, then this is a very good mm, way to write it down as a power sum, minus n minus epsilon, okay? 
So just let us multiply out n with this will give us the uh, n log of n. Then I take this minus n in front of it. Then I multiply n out with this. And you see here the k decrease because if you multiply this n in, we will lose one n here in the denominator. So, but the rest of the sum stays the same, minus epsilon. Okay, now I'm doing another step. I'm looking at this sum. If I'm plugging in 1, what will happen? Minus uh, 1 to the 1 will give you just, uh, to the 2, uh, gi will give you 1 over 1. So this is 1. We don't care about this. And 1 epsilon to the 1, which is just epsilon. And here we get n to the 0. So what we will get for the first part is just epsilon, but we subtract epsilon. So actually you can rewrite this stuff, this whole stuff is starting from k equals 2, and this is what I do in the last, okay? Now, this is awesome. Let's look what we can do here about. I will not use the whole sum. So the, the idea of the approximation, of the Stirling approximation, is that you only use the first part of this very, very strange looking thing. So we first write it down like it looks. Uh, so we start off with minus epsilon squared over 2n plus epsilon cubed over 3n squared. You can see the, the pattern in here. It's an alternating sum. The powers are increasing. Here we have, as the power, we have the same uh, number here and n to the, not the same power, but 1 decreased. This was because of the, our multiplication with n. So now I will just take this sum and say, OK, you know, we can stop this at here, okay? So we only have these parts in there. So we have the logarithm of t to the n e to the minus t is equal to n log of n minus n, this is this, and the first part of this expansion is minus epsilon squared over 2n, okay? Now what I will do, I will exponentiate here on both sides in order to get this expression e uh, t to the n e minus t uh, is approximately equal to, now you can use all the logarithm laws again, or better exponential laws, and you will see that this is equal to this. And what we will do ultimately is we will plug this expression into our integral, okay? So see what happens. If we plug in that expression into the integral, our integration variable becomes epsilon, and now we have to start at minus n because remember t was equal to n plus epsilon okay so we in order to have for the first value to have zero we have to start at minus n to infinity okay now we will do another step okay you see this, these are all approximation things i will later on say okay let's do as our minus n is pretty pretty large let's make it infinitely large okay so we have an integral from minus infinity to infinity this stuff is not dependent on epsilon so we can take it out of the integral so we have only the integral minus infinity to infinity e to the minus epsilon squared over 2n okay d epsilon now we know from the previous videos that the gamma of one half is equal uh, to square root of pi, and then we derive this cool expression that the square root of pi uh, over p is equal to the integral minus infinity to infinity e to the minus px squared. Okay, now let's look what the p is. p is actually 1 over n, so the integral will have a value of square root of 2 pi n. Okay. So what we find out is that this integral, okay, we will use this integral expression for here. We can see that this is uh, equal to n to the n, e to the n, so we can draw them out. And I told you this is minus infinity to infinity. Now the square root of 2n pi, because 1 over p, which is 1 over 2 half, will just give you 2n, okay? This is the famous... Sterling approximation. I hope you had fun on this video and please subscribe if you want to see my new upcoming video. So, see you guys.